Thank you, Emily. Just before I let you go, you're called Emily. Is it a name you like? And why did your parents call you Emily? I do like it. I think maybe it's because I'm used to it. I probably would like any other <laughs> name I'd been given. Um, my mother um, was a big fan of Charles Dickens, David Copperfield, and she liked she liked the heroines, but she didn't like their names. So they are Dora and Agnes, and she didn't want to call me either of those names. So she chose Emily, and I think Emily is the fallen woman. <gasps> Shocking stuff. All in woman, Emily Unia, with your the latest on those new speed limiters which may be fitted to cars from 2022. Across Cambridgeshire, on FM, online, on DAB. This is Thordis at Breakfast. On BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. So, did your name come from something very learned like that? Your parent was a great fan of something like Charles Dickens. Were you named after a movie star or a character from a film? Because wasn't it Spencer Tracy that is why so many people were called Tracy? I think it was, even though it ended up being a girl's name. I'm sure it was Spencer Tracy, the actor, that started that. My mum, called Tracy, hated the name... She was always after being called something else. She sort of came up with all different names, but she could never remember which name she said she was called at that particular point in time. And so it didn't really work. She just ended up being called Tracy in the end, even though she kept trying to change it. Apparently it could have been worse. Her parents were considering Roberta, which she didn't like at all, so she thought maybe I should be happy with Tracy after all. Andy says, I think, not Andy, our Andy Lake, who could have been called Thomas Lake. Andy listening this morning, I think my mum and dad got a bit fed up with naming us. I have a brother Joe and an uncle Joe, a brother called Tony and an uncle Tony, and you guessed it, brother called Terry and an uncle called Terry. They like to duplicate names. Were you in a family where everybody ended up being called, you know, grandfather, father, you, everybody called the same name? You go to a family reunion, you say Robert, everybody turns round. It's not practical. So let me know. As we discover, one in seven parents regret the name they chose for their child. What are you called? Why are you called it? Do you like it? Would you change it? Have you changed it? 81333 to drop me a text. Start your message with the word cam. And get in touch about our mystery voice. I rigged the election. This is somebody who's been in the news recently. I think it's easy peasy. Who does this voice belong to? I rigged the election. Get in touch. You can tweet me at Thunderfairy. You can email me as well. Thunderfairy at bbc.co.uk is the address you need. Across Cambridgeshire. Weekday mornings from seven. This is Thordis at Breakfast. On BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. Let me just tell you about the A14 as well. If you are in the north of the county, some of your routes may be a bit busier because the A14 is closed eastbound on the Cambridgeshire-Northamptonshire border between Junction 13 and 15, and the diversion is via the A605 and the A1M, so a bit busy in those parts. Your next travel news in about five minutes' time. First of all, at 5 to 8... Not exactly Sharm El Sheikh, but it is the closest Cambridgeshire ever got to an Egyptian beach. That is Wiz Beach, where a pop-up exhibition has been taking place to show off ancient Egyptian artefacts. These are artefacts usually housed at Cambridge's Fitzwilliam Museum. Our reporter John Devine has been to find the Valley of the Kings among the flatlands of the Fens. All my years on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire, I'm about to experience something quite surreal, really. I'm on Church Terrace in the, the capital of the Fens, it's Wisbeach, outside the Wheat Sheaf pub. But understand there's something quite unusual going on inside. So let's take a step inside, go through the large double doors, and we'll see what is occurring. Because as soon as you go through the doors, you are greeted with two large Perspex display cases, like you'd see in a museum. I can see one of them contains what looks like a sort of ceramic mask, a face of some sort of pharaoh, and a hand below that. And I've got with me... Hi, it's um, Melanie Pitchkin here from the Fitzwilliam Museum. I'm an Egyptologist, and I'm here for the pop-up exhibition that we've got. In a pub? We are in a pub. So what we've actually done here is we've brought some objects from the museum's collection and we're sharing our research into ancient Egyptian coffins with an audience that might not otherwise expect to come across this research. And show us what we've got in this case. I'll describe it as like a mask in ceramic brown, but what is that? We've actually got some fragments from a coffin lid. So we have a face, it's made from wood. 
but it's been painted and varnished so it looks quite shiny and we've got a hand as well so we've actually brought real objects from the collection out with we've got some replica tools so what we've actually been doing with our research is CT scanning and x-raying coffins to find out how they were made and how they were decorated so we're looking at the people behind the industry of coffin production and why coffins so we have a really fabulous collection of Egyptian coffins at the Fitzwilliam Museum and we know that people have CT scanned mummies before but never actually studied the objects that the mummies were housed in. And there's a lot that we can find out about, you know, how things were made in ancient Egypt through looking at coffins. So this, what I describe as a mask, part of the coffin, how old is that roughly? It's about 3,000 years old. <laughs> so everyone that comes into the pub is quite taken back to see something so old in their local weather spoons. You popped into the wheat sheaf, sir. What did you come here for primarily? Oh, just for the food and then I saw the display and interested. I think my first reaction was this never would have happened 20 years ago in a pub in Wisbech, simply because it just wouldn't have happened. And it's, uh, I don't know if it's a, a standard thing in the pubs in Cambridge, but it's certainly not around here. And it's marvellous. You've never seen anything like it? Not really, no, no. And what particularly grabbed your attention with like, the displays that are in the cases in front of us here? Um, just, just a general display and having a look in the leaflets, of course, and... Every, yeah, it's, it's just, just so interesting, isn't it? Being interested, yeah. That's yeah. what life is, isn't so it? sparked your interest, anyway. Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. And uh, hopefully it will spark a few more people's interest. I saw you, sir, walk over and look a bit stunned when you saw this lot. The artefacts and display cabinets. What do you think of it all? Well, I think it's superb. It's a really unusual display to, to see in someone like Wisbeach. And it brings forth something that maybe some people may not get the opportunity to, to see if, if this wasn't done. Have you ever visited the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge? I've got to say, I haven't. I've walked past it a couple of times. Really? But uh, I have been to Egypt, so I'm, I'm, I'm in on that side of the fence. But I may well make a point of visiting next time that I'm actually in Cambridge. John Devine discovering some Egyptian treasures in Wisbeach and another pop-up exhibition is due to take place in the county tomorrow but there is a huge sense of intrigue and mystery around this to find out where you have to go online to egyptiancoffins.org Across Cambridgeshire BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. We're talking names on the show. We were wondering if there were any young Garys. I'm afraid no baby Garys as yet, Gary Scott. Uh, while we wait, tell us how the roads are faring. Well, it is queuing if you're travelling on the A14. Uh, so going towards Thrapston at Junction 13, the eastbound side closed there all the way through to Junction 15, back of the queues around Junction 11 at Findon. Traffic's diverting on the A605 towards Peterborough, so at Barnwell, uh, that's queuing. Many on the northbound side, very slow in Peterborough. The Serpentine is queuing. I'm looking at delays at Wandsford on the A47. It's about a 10-minute drive there as you approach the M1. Now, the A14 around Cambridge, if you go towards Cambridge past Fenster, Stanton, it's queuing around Milton, it's very slow there. Parts of the A10 going past Water Beach onto the Milton interchange is slow. It's very busy on the A1, queuing northbound onto the uh, Buckton roundabout. If you spot a queue and it's safe and legal for you to do so, call us on 0330 123 3551. This is Gary Scott for BBC Radio Cambridgeshire Travel. Oh, Gary, you are brilliant. Thank you very much. Across Cambridgeshire, on FM, on DAB, on Freeview 722. This is BBC Radio Cambridgeshire. At 8, the BBC News for Cambridgeshire. I'm Andy Lake. MPs will take control of business in the House of Commons today so they can vote on potential alternatives to Theresa May's Brexit deal. Several options have been put forward, ranging from no deal to the cancellation of Brexit altogether. The government has already said it won't be bound by the votes. The Labour MP, Hilary Benn, who chairs the Commons Brexit Committee, explains how things would proceed. The first decision will be the speakers to decide which of the, I think it's 16 proposals that are being put forward, he is going to select to go onto that ballot paper that we will then put aye or no to when we come to vote just after seven o'clock. So until we know that, we won't know actually what we're voting on. Peterborough taxi drivers are calling for action after a spate of theft and assaults in the city. A group of cabbies have met with the county's police and crime commissioner, urging him to offer greater protection. Bashir Badar is from the Peterborough Private Taxi Hire Association and says more police patrols would help. This has been a, such a strong wave that's been going on for a good few weeks. I mean, it's, it's been an ongoing problem for a number of years, but practically what we were looking from police, and we've been requesting it all along, is we, have, we need more patrolling of the area, especially taxi concentrated areas. 
And Cambridgeshire police say they are investigating the incident. Meanwhile, Cambridge's Metro project could be handed another financial boost today. The Cambridgeshire and Peterborough Combined Authority is discussing the approval of another million pounds. Our political reporter Hannah Olson has more details. After an independent report,